Hi, everyone. Welcome to day two of the Crypto Privacy Conference presented to you by the Fidelity Center for Applied Technology. My name is Ria from Fidelity Digital Assets, and I will be your MC again for day two. So yesterday, we had some awesome sessions that covered a variety of topics related to privacy, um, including the importance of privacy from a regulatory perspective, financial privacy and protecting human rights around the world, um, a step-by-step -step guide on protecting yourself from having your identity and information compromised, and the role of privacy in a future where uh, central bank digital currencies are prevalent. So today we continue the conversation with a number of presentations and panels, including privacy and in using cryptocurrencies, the views of multiple venture capital investors on the topic, and privacy as a competitive advantage for cryptocurrency businesses, among others. We encourage you to post insights from the conference using our conference hashtag CPC2020. We'll have two breaks today, a 10 minute break at 2.10 and a 30 minute break at 3.20. And to start, I'll turn it over to Karmit Haze to kick off day two with a discussion on the price of active security in crypt cryptographic protocols. Over to you, Karmit. Thank you very much. Let me share my slide. Set the timer. Um, so do you see the slides? Is it all good? Looks great. Great. So thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome to be here. Uh, the opportunity to um, discuss some of our work. Um, and this is, uh, uh, this is a joint work with, um, with Mutu, which my, uh, my best friend and also uh, uh, my collaborator. Uh, and um, and this work is, has been done as, as part of an academic research, but it also has uh, practical uh, uh, applications, which I'm going to uh, explain in my talk. And th the second collaborator is more vice. All right, let me start. Good. So. Uh, a famous quote by uh, Pat Gelsinger um, says that data is the new science. The big data holds the answers. And this new science is about um, understanding human phenomena by processing large volumes of data where the answers to many scientific questions are out there. You just need to find them. Well, big data has proven to be very useful in, in improving our lives. This comes at the price of losing our privacy. And recent events have shown that data um, can be misused. Uh, moreover, certain interactions are impossible due to privacy regulations. For instance, think of two hospitals that would like to collaborate in order to conduct some research. However, they can't because privacy regulations prevent them from sharing patients' data. Therefore, um, this implies that privacy preserving tools are essential. So let me introduce secure multi-party computation, MPC. So this is a tool that allows a set of parties to directly communicate while obtaining the same security guarantees as when given access to a trusted party that computes the function. And um, security is, um, is proven in the presence of an attacker, an adversary that may um, corrupt a subset of parties and the security guarantee says that uh, such an attacker cannot learn anything beyond the output of the computation. This is how we formalize secure security proof protocols. We have, uh, we distinct two central types of adversaries. A passive adversary, which is a benign attacker, a very weak attacker, 
that we assume that follows the protocol's instructions while trying to violate privacy. Whereas the strongest and most realistic attack scenario is an active adversary that can follow the, uh, uh, an arbitrary attack scenario or attack strategy um, and could be a very strong attacker. Um, another aspect of defining security is the number of uh, corrupted parties, the number of parties we assume the adversary take control of. In the honest majority setting, the adversary may corrupt less than half of the parties. Whereas in a dishonest majority setting, all parties but one may be corrupted. And working in this setting, in the setting of dishonest majority, has the advantage that the party does not need to trust anyone but itself. In this talk, I will be focusing on the most challenging setting that is the active dishonest majority setting. And I'd like to stress that passively secure protocols can be broken very easily, even in simple scenarios, such as in the hospital's example I just gave you. Because one may claim that hospitals do not have any incentive to cheat each other. Therefore, passive security is sufficient. However, it's not really the case because they do, I mean, this type of security does not protect against external malicious hackers that break into the party system. Another simple attack that passive security doesn't handle is aborting the protocol, meaning that even the party follows the protocol's instructions but just decides to abort arbitrarily may fail the security proof of the protocol. So it's people and companies who do not sufficiently know about MPC often do not realize these vulnerabilities. So therefore the first take home message of this talk is that passive security is simply not enough for real world scenarios. By now we know that MPC is very useful and has many important applications such as private electronic auctions and votings. Uh, privacy preserving data mining, protecting cryptographic keys, and more. Uh, focusing on, on auctions with private bids, recall that the classic auction procedure um, does not hide the bids, right? So even both the, 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 uh, the winning bids as well as the uh, losing bids are revealed at the end of this uh, uh, procedure. And um, this information, or revealing these losing bids, may reveal uh, leak information about the strategies behind choosing these bids. And this is a very highly sensitive information. Um, oh, sorry. On the other hand, when we talk about auctions with private bids, in this case, only only the, uh, the, the winning bid is revealed, while the rest of the bids are remain, remain secret, private, such that even the auctioneer doesn't learn the losing bids. And this can protect against attempts of biasing or manipulating the auction. So MPC is a very useful tool when running auctions, we, we wanted to protect the privacy of the bids, mechanisms like auctions. So this is a very uh, uh, non-example of MPC. Now let me tell you more about um, MPC itself. And for instance, what are the challenges you're facing today when trying to design secure protocols? So as it stands, uh, for most of the works, both in theory and in practice in MPC, the overhead of achieving full security, and when I mean full security, I mean security against active adversaries, requires some order, some overhead of statistical parameter. And um, in practice, it has been shown this, this overhead can be at least around 20, between 20 and 30 
uh, uh, overhead. And um, over the passive, the underlying passive protocol. Uh, and for some benchmark functionalities that we uh, implement uh, when trying to scale these protocols, we can only scale pretty much up to 100 parties. And we have severe bottlenecks that we need to, uh, to deal with. And therefore, both theory and practice um, in both areas, there aren't protocols that are going to scale for an arbitrary number of parties and minimal overhead. I just, I do want to point out that for certain uh, um, um, regimes, like for uh, uh, computations that are performed over a large field, we do have some tools that allow for small overhead. But these are mainly theoretical objects. We, we do not know how to analyze or even identify the concrete constants. Okay, so a common paradigm in designing MPC protocols is to first design a protocol with passive security and then amplify its security to the active setting. And in, in, this, in this talk, um, the focus in about, or is about, about understanding the overhead of amplifying passive to active security, where specifically we care about the cost of communication complexity. So a major theoretical goal would be to design compilers that introduce essentially no cost for the active setting, keeping the same asymptotic efficiency as for the underlying passive protocol, right? So the goal is to go from passive to active without paying too much, both in communication and in computation. In practice, we can be even concrete and require that this constant could be very small, as small as two. So to, to frame the question we would like to solve, we will focus on designing modular protocols where the computationally expensive cryptographic component is separated from the rest of the protocol and abstracted by some functionality. Specifically, this cryptographic abstraction that we consider in this work is a protocol for computing distributed multiplication. And this abstraction allows to capture many settings simultaneously. So what do we mean by that? Think of distributed addition, where each party contributes a share such that the sum of all shares correspond to some secret. So this is what we call secret sharing in crypto. Now, additive secret sharing is, is easier to achieve because the parties can locally add two shares. They don't need to communicate. But for multiplication, we need to run a protocol specifically to compute this functionality, which I'm going to denote by F mode. So this product, the sum of, of the product of the two sums, and then resharing. This is what we call F mode. And um, it's a highly fundamental functionality in MPC, where the number of times we need to call this functionality essentially uh, measure the complexity of the protocol, or is a measure, it's a typical measure for the complexity of the protocol. So given this discussion, um, I can now phrase, uh, rephrase our motivating questions as follows. The question that we solved in this work. Can actively secure protocols over an arbitrary field match the complexity of passively secure implementations given only black box access to F mode? both in the dishonest and in the honest majority settings, and for any number of parties. And when I say black box calls, I mean that our protocol, the specification of our protocol, does not depend on the spec of the implementation for F mode. 
It works for any implementation. So that's the question. And the answer is yes. Specifically, we, we have shown that there exists, uh, uh, or our main result shows that there exists a compiler that makes, makes a constant number of calls to any passive implementation of FNOT. In practice, this constant can be brought down to be as small as two when we work over a large finite fields. So I don't have much time to discuss our techniques, uh, but I do want to say something, how did we achieve this result or explain our approach. So I'll, uh, let me explain the following. So a classic protocol in MPC is denoted by uh, BGW, named after its authors, Ben Orr, Goldwasser, and Victor Zoll. This is a very famous uh, protocol. And um, at a high level, um, we take this protocol and we tweak it. We slightly modify the way um, we use this protocol and that buys us a lot of mileage. So what do I mean by that? Um, the BG, BGW protocol, we consider the simple variant passive uh, protocol uses a simple uh, form of or notion of secret chain. Instead of using the techniques as in the original protocol, we use two types of secret sharing mechanisms. Basically, we have two layers of sharing. The basic layer, and on top of it, we share the shares. And switching from one sharing to two sharings allows to run some computations performed in a distributed manner in BGW locally and vice versa. What do I mean by that? In BGW, the parties some of the properties of the underlying secret sharing allows to compute the shares locally and then perform a procedure we call a degree reduction. Abstractly, you can think there are two polynomials. We, we, we compute, we multiply them, then the degree is increased. Now we need to reduce it. To reduce the degree, we need communication. Here we do something that you can think of it as exactly the opposite. The parties do not multiply locally. They use the fmult functionality I described before. And the fact that we have two layers of secret sharing allows the parties to have what we call a global view of the protocol, or more accurately, a share of a global view of the protocol. And therefore, they can do uh, uh, this, this degree reduction procedure locally. So by tweaking this uh, uh, approach, we were able to uh, uh, use this protocol in a bigger framework, which allowed us to reduce the, uh, the overhead of the overall computation. And basically in this work, we solved an open problem uh, by allowing to achieve what we call constant overhead or constant communication overhead for any number of parties. It wasn't known before. I will conclude with another application. So recall that our starting point was that MPC does not scale. Now in a recent project, we showed how to push these boundaries and design an implementation that runs with thousands of parties for a setup ceremony. And let me give you the context first. So an RSA modulus is a product of two large primes. This is what we call a biprime. 
And uh, RSA moduli have been used um, for many uh, uh, applications in crypto. Starting from the 17th, they've been used for uh, the well-known RSA public key encryption. And um, they had other applications. And most recently, they've used for implementing verifiable delay function, or VDFs for short. And VDFs have gained popularity recently as a strategy for generating randomness in blockchain networks. This is a core object in Ethereum 2.0 project that will shift from proof of work to a proof of stake. And our project will contribute to the scalability of establishing the next iteration. So why MPC here? Because the goal or the way this VDF is used, it requires an RSA uh, uh, moduli or modules where no one knows the prime product, P and Q. Meaning that a bunch of parties in this particular setup, 1000 parties, will need to collaborate such that each party contributes two shares, one share for P and one share for Q. And the protocol will assemble these shares in a clever way, such that the outcome will be an RSA modulus, and no one will know the, um, the prime factors. In fact, an adversary that would like to break this RSA modulus will have to break into all participants in the protocol. So our implementation runs with 10,000 parties. For the particular setup, I mean, this, the, the, uh, uh, the, the setup ceremony, we need 1,000 parties, well, but we were managed to push it even further for 10,000 parties. And that was beyond any reach up until this point. So, this functionality is, is a special functionality because the parties do not have secret inputs. But this basically will be the next goal. So currently we are working on extending this technology for achieving private auction mechanisms through web interfaces for a large uh, 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 number of participants. And we are also working on many other cool applications for MPC. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Carmen. Uh, MPC is a term that we hear a lot in crypto. Um, so thank you for shedding light on the technical benefits, um, challenges, and then some of the way, ways to address the challenges associated with the protocol. Uh, we're, we're certainly excited to see what you do next with this. 